You are looking live at the beautiful King City of Sacramento, California, as we approach the Golden One Center for the Friday Night SmackDown exclusive Battleground event. Hello again, everybody, and may the fourth be with you for what is going to be an incredible night as the SmackDown superstars take center stage at Battleground. It is a night where championships, bragging rights, and retribution hang in the balance. Welcome inside the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California, as we kick off the SmackDown exclusive Battleground. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring, representing the L. From Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, Santos Escobar. The Emperor of Lucha Libre, former three-time Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar, has taken it upon himself to defend the honor of the Latino World Order after El Idolo Andrade has done his damnedest to wedge in between Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio in the backstage area and even out here at ringside as of late. 
There have been murmurs for weeks that Andrade was trying to lure Rey Mysterio away from the LWO, really disrespecting Santos Escobar, Del Toro, and Wilde in the process. Rey Mysterio had no interest in aligning himself with El Idolo. Santos Escobar tonight looks to get back at Andrade, forever disrespecting the LWO family. But this is Andrade's first live premiere event since his SmackDown return, and you gotta believe he's coming in with a mission to succeed. And his opponent, from Gomez Palacio, Durango, Mexico, weighing in at 210 pounds, Andrea! A former United States champion as well as a former NXT champion, Andrade made his Friday Night SmackDown return upwards of a month ago and went down in a blades of glory against the World Heavyweight Champion Gunther. But since then, Andrade has come back with a game plan. He wanted Rey Mysterio to be his tag team partner, his partner in arms inside of the squared circle. Rey Mysterio said, listen, it's the LWO or nothing. Andrade wasn't interested, and Andrade even took it upon himself last night on SmackDown to dish back a little bit of that frustration at Rey Mysterio, grabbing his foot underneath the bottom rope and really costing him that matchup against Austin Theory. Nonetheless, Andrade's plan to try to wedge between the LWO obviously has not worked, and now he finds himself in a one-on-one -on -one battle against the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, who, as we mentioned, is looking to defend the honor of the Latino World Order tonight. But as we mentioned as well, this is Andrade's first live premiere event since his SmackDown return, a former champion in his own right, world travel veteran of the squared circle. Andrade is not looking for a best comeback tonight to be ruined, if you will, by hands of the Emperor of Lucha Libre. Success on the mind of both men. But as we kick off what is going to be an extraordinary event here in the Golden One Center, only one man is going to get their hand raised high. Nonetheless, of the personal issues, this should be a great Lucha Libre battle between two great superstars inside of that ring. Santos Escobar and Andrade kicking things off here at Battleground. So much to be decided tonight. Championships and personal vendettas hang in the balance. The landscape of SmackDown certainly could be changed by the end of tonight. Santos Escobar, hot out of the gates in the early going. Tilt to whirl into a nice variation of a leg drop there. Certainly Andrade's plan to foil the LWO. Certainly went up in smoke a little bit more a couple of weeks ago in the middle of that number one contender's battle royal for Ricochet's United States Championship. Andrade and Santos Escobar crossing past in the middle of that matchup. Santos Escobar eliminating Andrade from that battle. It was obviously not sat in well with El Idolo, and as we mentioned, took it upon himself to interfere last night on SmackDown in that matchup between Rey Mysterio and one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, Austin Theory. Oof. And now Andrade looks to take matters into his own hands tonight. Almost saying that, fine, Ray, you didn't want to join up with me. You didn't want to be business partners trying to take over SmackDown alongside Alita Lowe. Well, this is what the LWO's got to do. This is the price they pay. Santos Escobar in the middle of trying to defend the honor of the Latino world order, finding himself between a rock and a hard place. Now here comes Andrade with a tope suicide to the outside. One thing we have never done is discount the efforts of El Idolo. Andrade, one of the best inside of the squared circle today, and he's back on SmackDown to prove it. Santos Escobar may just be the casualty to Andrade's return to a premium live event. All remains to be seen, the former three-time Cruiserweight champion and the Emperor of Lucha Libre not looking to go down without a fight. This is what we get when you disrespect the family. And now Andrade trying to wear down Santos Escobar. Figure four, but could be going for a figure eight into the bridge. Santos Escobar is finding himself in trouble in the early moments of this matchup. This will do a lot to wear you down. This will make fatigue set in a hell of a lot earlier than normal. Take out the legs. You may take out the fight of Santos. A nice wherewithal by Escobar. Just trying to muscle out the legs of Andrade. Wrapping him up like a pretzel in there. And Santos Escobar with other plans. 
Now the beatdown commences. I am sure Santos Escobar, a little bit more fired up tonight to get his hands on Andrade after being bared witness to Andrade Costa Mysterio in that matchup last night. Well, Escobar on the apron, DDT. And representing the LWO with flying colors. Dropping Andrade in the hardest part of the ring. Santos Escobar looking good in this matchup so far. Oof. Andrade with his own plans. Misses the drop kick wildly. Escobar going to meet him in between the ropes. Santos misses a drop kick. Now Andrade off the Irish whip. Down he goes. Back and forth the momentum swings between these two Lucha stars. And Andrade launching himself with the leg drop. And now to the top. Going for a frog splash and it lands flush. However, not enough to put Santos Escobar away just yet. Great effort by Andrade, like him or not. The slingshot leg drop followed by the frog splash. A great series of maneuvers. But Santos Escobar still with fight left in him. Oh, wait a minute. Andrade dishing it right back to Escobar with a little more added spice. His own variation of a slingshot DDT out on the apron. And just like that, El Idolo has turned the tables in your opening matchup tonight at Battleground. Beating down Santos at ringside. The Emperor of Lucha Libre is in deep trouble. They just spoke too soon. Santos catching the boot. Trying to create some distance right now. Santos now finds himself in a position of playing catch up. Springboard, crossbody. Dead center of the ring with the cover. Andrade getting the shoulder up, but a great comeback attempt by Escobar. Santos Escobar looking to teach Andrade a lesson tonight that this is what happens when you interfere with family business. And Andrade misses with the drop kick wildly. Santos Escobar revving up the engines here in Sacramento. Andrade hoisted on the top, not by will, but by force of the opposer. Now the Emperor of Lucha Libre looking to pull a rabbit out of the hat, dropping Andrade on the top rope. Enough to knock the wind out of you any day of the week, twice on Saturday. Andrade getting the shoulder up off the lateral press. And now Santos looking to scale the ropes and oof. Oh, he might have got caught that time. Knee got caught right in the ropes. Andrade capitalizing on a misstep. Hammerlock DDT. Andrade into the cover. And Alitalo has picked up the victory here in the Golden One Center. Here is your winner. Santos Escobar starting to rev the engines near the end of that contest for that one misstep. Andrade getting them tangled in the ropes. Santos had to watch the knee. All the while, he got locked up in the hammerlock. The DDT turns his lights off here in Sacramento. A disappointing loss for Latino World Order member Santos Escobar, but Andrade's return to a live premiere event goes the way of El Idolo. A great matchup to kick things off here in the Golden One Center. Well, coming up next here in Sacramento, California, it is the highly anticipated last man standing matchup for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World as the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, goes one-on-one -on -one with the Czar, the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. Dragunov had a successful 2023, winning the Intercontinental Championship, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, the Breakout Superstar of the Year, all the while winning the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. J.D. McDonough has taken issue with the Czar ever since the month of December and has been in hot pursuit of the Cruiserweight Championship of the World and everything that Dragunov has to offer. This is not the first time that these two men will go to war. They fought back in the early part of January at SmackDown New Year's Revolution. Dragunov retained the title, but J.D. McDonough was not satisfied in that defeat. 
McDonough continued to attack Dragunov week in and week out until he got another battle, which took place at the Elimination Chamber event, and in another war between these two men that left Dragunov damn near broken and especially bloody, the Tsar found a way to retain the title. Of course, cross pass again at the grandest stage of them all in the middle of a six man ladder matchup where the Mad Dragon continued to spew his fire on the cruiserweight division. But JD McDonough just keeps coming back for more. And over the last few months on SmackDown, Ilya Dragunov has found himself staring up at the lights time and time again thanks to sneak attacks from the Irish Ace. Something's got to give. McDonough's got one more opportunity, and he's got to make the most of it. Will Dragunov continue to spew his fire, or will JD McDonough be the last man standing? The Iris ace, J.D. McDonough, has played his cards right. But will he make the most of what has got to be his final opportunity for the Cruiserweight Championship of the world? And the stakes couldn't be any higher. The environment couldn't be any more dangerous. No count outs, no disqualification. This match ends when one superstar is counted down for 10. Who will be the last man standing, leaving with the prestigious Cruiserweight gold? And as you saw, J.D. McDonough has certainly had the blood on his hands. He has left Dragunov laying time and time again, not just over the last few weeks, but over the last few months on Friday Night SmackDown. But one thing you can't say about J.D. McDonough is that he hasn't earned another match for the Cruiserweight title. Victories over Wesley, Johnny Gargano, and most recently on Velocity this past Wednesday, a victory over the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. McDonough, as we mentioned, has played his cards right. He has gone all in, focusing on Ilya Dragunov and his determination and his damn near obsession with becoming the Cruiserweight Championship has brung him to this event tonight. But will he be able to survive the onslaught, survive the fury and the fire of the Mad Dragon? We read down Ilya Dragunov's accolades over the last year and change here in the WWE. And he damn well may be better than ever. The Tsar, the invincible cruiserweight champion of the world, Ilya Dragunov. Every man who has stepped up has been stepped on. Ilya Dragunov has continued to carve his legacy month after month, whether it was over on Monday Night Raw or when he begun his SmackDown career. Ilya Dragunov has made a dent everywhere he has arrived. He was the Intercontinental Champion for several months in 2023. Participated in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament last fall and won it all, which propelled him to challenging Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight title on November the 19th of last year and has held that championship for 167 days ever since. J.D. McDonough may only be a footnote in the legacy of the Mad Dragon. The third time these Men will go one-on-one -on -one for that prestigious gold that is around the waist of the Invincible One. Will J.D. McDonough be the last man standing? Or will he fall to the Invincible Mad Dragon that I am sure is not only coming in with the intent of retaining his Cruiserweight Championship, but has got to be hell-bent on finally putting J.D. McDonough behind him here tonight. The stage is set for this Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 180 pounds, J.D. McDonough. And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, 
Weighing in at 187 pounds, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Ilya Dragunov. Dragunov has been left laying time and time again by the cold-hearted hands of the Irish Devil himself. Will Dragunov get his retribution in the midst of battle tonight? Or will JD McDonough finally claim the gold that has been hoarded by the Mad Dragon himself? No disqualifications, no countouts. Last man standing will be your victor. Bell has sounded, we are underway, and JD McDonough hot out of the gate. Ilya Dragunov. Many a times when he has fought J.D. McDonough has been the aggressor. And a lot of that has to do with the ambushes, with the attacks that McDonough has spewed upon Dragunov. J.D. McDonough trying to beat Dragunov to the punch tonight, but he may just come back to haunt him. The Mad Dragon, somebody who thrives off pain inside of that ring. A last man standing matchup may just favor the champion. They don't call this man invincible for nothing. Ilya Dragunov is just a different breed inside of that ring. JD McDonough knows what he's in for tonight. Will he be able to survive? Being brought to the outside. The Czar's wheels are spinning. Tope Suicida, the dragon goes flying. Sacramento coming unglued in the early moments of this matchup. The stakes couldn't be any higher and possibly the biggest cruiserweight championship match of all time. A story that has been waged for the last six months and change on Friday Night Smackdown. Now takes center stage tonight at Battleground. Dragunov bringing the fight to the outside. And with no count outs or no disqualifications tonight, there is nothing stopping the Mad Dragon from instituting a massive beatdown on McDonough. JD McDonough may be seeing flashbacks to New Year's Revolution at the top of the year, inadvertently breaking down the barricade. We got a direct route into the WWE Universe now. And the brawl is on. There ain't nothing the referee or anybody can do to stop it. This fight can go anywhere. It can go to the streets of Sacramento if need be. The referee is only there to count one of these bodies down for the count of 10. In the middle of the golden one center, JD McDonough trying to find a way back into this matchup, but this has been all dragging off since the opening bell. Ilya Dragunov looked like inadvertently took out the barricade off that senton. Now this fight has gotten taken into the arena. JD McDonough looking to make the most of it. Concrete floor below them and weaponry. Where it just may come back to haunt one of these superstars. Oof. Ilya Dragunov sent it right to that table. Rib first and wait a minute here. JD McDonough looking to institute it. Suplex through the table, down to the concrete floor. The count has begun. Dragunov's got to get to his feet, or JD McDonough's going to be the new Cruiserweight Champion. Oh man, kind of ate that time. Dragunov going through the table early. Anything goes in this matchup, but look at Dragunov trying to hurry up. Full head of steam. That is one of the scariest sights I've ever seen. Right into a sleeper hold on JD McDonough. Two seconds away, McDonough was from becoming champion. Dragging off trying to play catch up. McDonough breaking the hold. You pass out your opponent. I don't think he's going to be getting up for any count. Dragunov might have been banking on it at that time, but McDonough may be in the driver's seat after Dragunov's body went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the concrete floor and the wood of that table. Anything goes, anything can happen in this last man standing matchup. Now McDonough breaking out a steel chair, which we have seen him use on Ilya Dragunov. Remember back on the first episode of Velocity a few months ago, Dragging off victorious in action, then ambushed after the match with a steel chair by the man in the ring, the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough. Dragging off trying to introduce that kendo stick. 
JD McDonough trying to avoid the Mad Dragon. They will knock him down to size that time. JD McDonough getting to his feet. Ilya Dragunov. Probably knew McDonough was going to be getting up that time, but took the moment for R&R. &R. That table in the early going, not going to go well for Dragunov as we get into deep waters in this last man standing matchup. We're only a few minutes in, and already it looks like human demolition derby around the Golden One Center. A broken barricade, a broken table, and weapons galore. Now look at the strength. Ilya Dragunov showing why they call him an invincible superstar. Muscling up J.D. McDonough. McDonough going for an amusement park ride. And Dragunov all kinds of fired up here in Sacramento. McDonough once again trying to get to his feet. There's the strength this time. On the top rope he goes. Dragunov just trying to wear down J.D. McDonough. These two men are really fast and furious off the opening bell. Starting to come down the size a little bit. Trying to reset and regroup. Going for Saito, J.D. McDonough reverses on his feet. Dragunov sent head first right into that chair that J.D. propped up a few minutes ago. J.D. McDonough set the trap, and Dragunov fell right into it that time. Referees at a count of six. J.D. McDonough on the verge of gold. Not just yet, Dragunov gets to his feet once more. Double underhook, powerbomb. J.D. McDonough may have momentum on his side tonight. As we mentioned, victories over Johnny Gargano, Wes Lee, Tyler Bate over the last few months, and most recently this week on SmackDown. J.D. McDonough trying to introduce another table this time. Dragunov did not get what he wanted. Big time slingshot cutter by the Irish Ace. Damn near hit the bridges of that table. Hell of a maneuver by J.D. McDonough. We know how dangerous that man can be. Talk about that victory over Wesley. That was almost two months ago on Friday Night SmackDown. A beatdown after the matchup. We haven't seen Wesley since. J.D. McDonough never been afraid to get the blood on his hands. Dragunov has found that out firsthand over the last couple of months. Will McDonough make the most of it here tonight? Launching Dragunov off the top rope again. Once again, the count commences, but J.D. McDonough is still got a blueprint in mind. Double stomp to the lower back, my goodness! McDonough will throw Dragunov's body caution into the wind if it means J.D. leaves as the Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Unforgiven, no remorse. No mercy being shown tonight between these two superstars who have a hatred for each other, ready to destroy each other in the means of success. Counter by the Czar, much needed at that, but McDonough meets him with a shot and a headbutt for good measures. And now JD McDonough again, wearing down the Mad Dragon. Last time these two men went one-on-one -on -one was back at the Elimination Chamber at the end of January. J.D. McDonough did a number to Ilya Dragunov on that night. Was inches away from becoming the Cruiserweight Champion. Did not come to be. Dragunov being reminded all over again what the game plan of the Irish Devil is all about. And J.D. McDonough looking to institute it better than he ever has tonight. J.D. McDonough knows that championship opportunities don't come around every day. And tonight may be his final opportunity to slay the dragon here at Battleground. I believe Ilya Dragunov has been busted wide open, but he may just be being fueled off the fury. McDonough set over the top rope. Dragunov starting a rally here in Sacramento. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Ilya Dragunov, somebody who has always thrived off the pain and punishment. Dragunov lives for these kind of fights. Oh my goodness, oh man! 
Man, Dragon Ball faking JD McDonough out with a kendo stick and instead delivered a torpedo Moscow at ringside. Ilya Dragunov is fired up. JD McDonough's lights may be out cold. Not just yet. McDonough able to get to his feet, but how close was that? JD McDonough obviously got a couple screws loose right now. He's got to get his wits about him after Dragunov delivered that fake out and then the torpedo Moscow. Creative offense by the man Dragon. JD McDonough with a last ditch effort. And I believe McDonough, if I'm not mistaken, may have been busted open off the head to head contact with that torpedo Moscow. Both these men showing signs of war as we could have expected in this last man standing match. Now Dragunov with a kendo stick, beating down the Irish Devil. And back and forth, the pendulum of momentum starts to swing in this match as both men jock for position and try to beat down the other, become the last man standing, and get the hell out of Dodge with the gold. Now McDonough with the weaponry in his hand. Look at the Institute of Plunder and right to the open wound. Dragunov avoids another blow. The war has been brought to ringside here in the Golden One Center, and it ain't going well for either of these superstars. First Dragunov goes down, then JD goes down. Back and forth we go. McDonough trying to get to his feet once again. And oh, wait a minute. JD McDonough's wheels are turning, clearing off the announce table. I don't know what McDonough's got in mind, but we could probably put two and two together as Ilya Dragunov in chase of the challenger. Now in hands of J.D. McDonough, and I don't think this is going to go well for an already broken, possibly beaten Dragon. On the announce table. Devil inside. Ilya Dragunov may be out for good. J.D. McDonough may have slayed the Dragon here at Battleground. Oh my goodness, Dragunov's getting to his feet. The devil inside, through the announce table, but somehow the Tsar is still standing. The cruiserweight champion of the world is a different breed. They don't call him invincible for nothing. We have seen his back against the wall time and time again, and he rises like a phoenix. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do that tonight. J.D. McDonough is looking to write a different story. Dragunov may have survived, but is certainly not thriving right now. McDonough with another steel chair. And is interrupting the referee's count to institute his own amount of punishment on the Cruiserweight Champion. Oof. Dragunov just stay down. JD McDonough is not going to stop. McDonough's obsession with becoming the cruiserweight champion has led him to this steel chair to the dome. The open wound of the Czar being met with a cold hard steel chair by the cold hard hands of JD McDonough. Ilya Dragunov's career would probably benefit from staying down at this point. Oh, wait a minute, come on now. JD McDonough, the damn match was probably going to be over there, but McDonough's obsession with slaying the dragon, setting up another table inside of the ring. Ilya Dragunov trying to create some distance with whatever adrenaline's left. Did JD McDonough cost himself that time? Letting his desire to beat down Ilya Dragunov fuel him tonight. Into the ropes goes JD. Dragunov with whatever's left. Trying to dip and dodge. McDonough goes for a ride. Both these men busted wide open. Whatever they got left in the tank. McDonough up against the table. 
Ilya Dragunov saying it's an eye for an eye. Through the table goes JD. It was JD McDonough who put Dragunov through the table earlier in this matchup. And now the Mad Dragon in the same fashion, dishing it right back to the challenger. Unfortunately, JD McDonough getting to his feet. The debris is all over the squared circle. And a pound of flesh from both of these men has been spread upon the Golden One Center. This has been a war of all wars for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World and we expect nothing less. I don't know how Ilya Dragunov is still going right now, trying anything he can to keep down JD McDonough. But McDonough's obsession with the Cruiserweight Championship, fueling him to get to the soles of his boots. McDonough up again. Ilya Dragunov trying to find a way in this matchup. McDonough off the counter, takes out the leg. Oh no, on the shoulders is the champion, a second devil inside! JD McDonough may have put the exclamation point on this match. He's not done just yet. Head butt to the open wound. Saito on the debris. The combination that has laid out JD McDonough, Ilya Dragunov, time and time again. Referees at a count of four. The Mad Dragon looks to be out cold. J.D. McDonough has slayed the Dragon. Ilya Dragunov pouring himself to his feet at the count of 11, but that's one second too late. J.D. McDonough wins this race to the finish line finds a way to keep down the Czar. Here is your winner, and the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion, J.D. McDonough. J.D. McDonough's obsession, month in and month out, in 2024 on Friday Night SmackDown, has finally led him to the Cruiserweight Championship of the world. A great reign for Ilya Dragunov at the top of the cruiserweight division. But a man was bound to come around and slay the dragon one day. And that day was tonight. The Irish Devil played his cards right. And in the middle of a last man standing war, JD McDonough stands on the soles of his boots as your new champion of the cruiserweight division. Last year, it was SmackDown superstar Austin Theory wearing the crown of the King of the Ring winner. But who will wear the crown in 2024? Well, we're going to find out next month from Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, Louisiana, Saturday night, June the 15th. It is the 2024 edition of the King of the Ring. The tournament to take place over the next month and change on Raw and SmackDown, the bracket to be revealed who will wear the crown of the King. We want to take you back to last night on SmackDown. We talked about it earlier. Rey Mysterio one-on-one -on -one with one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, Austin Theory. There you see the distraction from Andrade. Austin Theory picked up the victory, but a short-lived celebration as the Tag Team Champions were interrupted. And we had a little confrontation with the champions and their challengers tonight. The number one contenders, Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Those two cruiserweights have been red hot on the blue brand, but will they ride that momentum right here in a Sacramento, California and leave with the Tag Team Championship? What is our second championship match of the evening? The WWE Tag Team Titles to be decided. And tonight's number one contenders, the challengers, Axiom and Nathan Frazier have come together in recent weeks on SmackDown and have taken the tag team division by storm. Two singles cruiserweight stars who have found a newfound allegiance 
and are looking to capitalize tonight on championship gold. And Axiom and Nathan Frazier can certainly be thanking each other for carrying the weight of the team. It all started in a matchup against the LWO. Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, where Axiom shined in the final moments, knocking down Rey Mysterio and picking up the victory just as several weeks ago on SmackDown. Well, that was really the kickoff to the momentum for these two young stars. It was on that night that Axiom and Nathan Frazier realized something was in the air, realized that they got a, a coherent pairing, if you will, and really took that momentum into a matchup with Imperium, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser a few weeks back on SmackDown, where they certainly proved their worth as the next number one contenders. Nathan Frazier has challenged for championship gold in the past, more specifically the cruiserweight title, never the tag team titles. A high profile situation with a newfound goal. These two men making to make, looking to make the most of it. As we mentioned, Axiom and Nathan Frazier just a number of weeks ago, 2v2 against Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium. Nathan Frazier, certainly the breakout star on that night. Taking the fight to the outside, Canadian Destroyer. Moments after that Topekin hero over the top rope, Frazier kept the foot on the gas pedal, much to the chagrin of Giovanni Vinci. Nathan Frazier taking out one half of Imperium and scoring a count out victory on that night. But as they say, a win is a win. And after two victories over two sustained tag teams on SmackDown, Really no denying that Axiom and Nathan Frazier are worthy challengers for the gold here tonight at Battleground. The 2023 King of the Ring winner has certainly made a lot of noise since last June, challenging for championship gold and winning championship gold on Friday Night SmackDown. One half of the WWE Tag Team Champions one half of the 2024 SmackDown Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners, the man from A-Town, the young, brash, egotistical, yet certainly talented, Austin Theory walking down the aisle with the lights on bright. You know, dare I say, Austin Theory has really become one of the faces of Friday nights over the last year. Whether he's been at the top of the card or the bottom, Austin Theory, like it or not, always shines and certainly has been producing results since before WrestleMania in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament. 2024 has been very generous to a town down under. But will their reign at the top expire before our very eyes? Axiom and Nathan Frazier, the rocket has been strapped to their back. They've been riding a high, but is the fire about to be put out by Austin Theory and Grayson Waller? Austin Theory riding high off a of victory, as we saw moments ago over Rey Mysterio just 24 hours ago on SmackDown. A confidence boost that I'm sure is always welcome. But as for this man, the Aussie icon Grayson Waller may have celebrated Austin Theory's victory last night, but certainly wasn't celebrating his loss just a few weeks ago on Friday Night SmackDown. One half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, Grayson Waller, went toe to toe with one half of the number one contenders, Nathan Frazier, in an extraordinary battle. Just eight nights ago on Friday nights, Nathan Frazier doing what he does best, soaring through the skies and picking up a huge victory over one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions. Hard to say who's got the momentum on their side tonight. The champions are the champions, and the champion's always the favorite. But nobody can deny the momentum of Nathan Fraser and Axiom. A-Town down under got their work cut out for them tonight. The WWE Tag Team titles exclusive to Friday Night SmackDown are on the line here at the SmackDown exclusive Battleground event. The Golden One Center's been rocking all night long. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall and is for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 336 pounds. The team of Axiom and Nathan Frazier. 
and their opponents at a combined weight of 426 pounds. The team of Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. A town down under looking confident as ever, as they always do. But are they handing over the WWE Tag Team titles for the last time in their championship reign that kicked off on Sunday night, March the 2nd? Austin Theory and Grayson Waller already with a successful reign under their belt. Defending the golds against Alpha Academy on the first SmackDown of the season. Axiom and Nathan Fraser, the next duo to step up. Will they be the kryptonite? That's what we look for right here, right now, as this tag team title match is underway. Axiom high out of the gate, and this is what Theory and Waller need to avoid tonight from the challengers, letting the challengers set the pace and soar through the skies as they prefer to do so. Axiom not wasting any time, no hesitation for one half of the challengers. Just trying to wear down Austin Theory and the man on the apron, Grayson Waller, with their high risk maneuvers. Can't blame Axiom and Frazier is what brought them to the dance, not just to number one contendership, but to the stage of Friday Night SmackDown. And now here on this huge stage tonight of Battleground in Sacramento, California, Frazier and Axiom looking to leave WWE Tag Team Champions. Nathan Frazier with his own shooting star press. Austin Theory on the receiving end of high risk and high reward from the challengers. This pace keeps up. Frazier and Axio may be winning the WWE Tag Team titles in short order tonight. Austin Theory looking like a man that doesn't know what hit him. And now being sent to the outside. History looking to repeat itself. Nathan Frazier with his eyes locked on the outskirts of the squared circle. Somewhere he is not afraid to be. Tope suicide through the ropes and sending Austin Theory like a bullet into the barricade. These two cruiserweight stars certainly know how to light an audience on fire. They have taken the division of the tag teams by storm. A victory over the LWO and Imperium brought them to the dance tonight, and it may lead them to tag team championship success before our very eyes. Austin Theory has gotten no offense in this matchup. It has been all Axiom and Nathan Frazier so far. This is what Austin Theory's got to do. Use his size and strength to his advantage and keep the cruiserweights grounded. Tag made to the Aussie icon, Grayson Waller. You got to believe Waller itching to get his hands on Frazier. After what some would say was an upset victory eight nights ago on SmackDown. As Frazier goes into the ropes and Grayson Waller making him pay for his troubles. The momentum of the tag team champion certainly going for a spin when Nathan Frazier delivered that Phoenix Flash in a victory eight nights ago on the blue brand. Grayson Waller making him pay with a shot right to the jaw and now trying to take out the legs. Pick apart the challengers, take away the high-flying offense. Notice how the pace has already begun to slow down a little bit in the champion's favor. This is what they got to do. Like him or not, it is smart strategy from A-Town down under. Tag back to Austin Theory. Big body theory, as he'd like to call it. Certainly something he better be leaning on against the fast and resilient challengers. You can call their victories over the LWO and Imperium flukes. You can call them upsets, but it's what got them here tonight. And it may be what leads them to the championships. Maybe not, if Austin Theory's got anything to say about it. Dropping Frazier right on his knee. Nathan Frazier, however, able to get the shoulder up. Austin Theory, great offense that time. Done a good job in grounding Nathan Frazier in the last few moments. We're going to see some tag team action here from the champions. Talk about what brung them to the dance. Three rounds of the SmackDown Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Rode that momentum, of course, into WrestleMania where they defeated the LWO to not only win the tournament but kick off their reign as WWE Tag Team Champions. As we mentioned, already a successful defense of the gold on the first SmackDown of the season against Chad Gable and Otis of Alpha Academy. 
Will Nathan Frazier and Axiom be another stepping stone in their tag team championship reign? Or will Grayson Waller and Austin Theory be falling to these challengers tonight? Grayson Waller dishing it right back to Frazier with a tope of his own. Grayson Waller showing Nathan Frazier not the only one who could take things to the sky if need be. Is that a little bit of desperation being shown out of one half of the tag team champions? Oh man! Blockbuster unprettier on the outside. That's enough to knock the lights out of Nathan Frazier any day of the week. Frazier's gonna try to shake the cobwebs off. Grayson Waller not allowing it. The blockbuster unprettier continuing to set a precedent in this tag team title matchup. Nathan Frazier survives, but certainly does not look like a man who is thriving at the current moment. Grayson Waller, stutter! Out of nowhere! And Axiom breaking things up. A last ditch effort for the challengers. If Axiom didn't break things up, you gotta believe this thing would be over. Nathan Frazier taking a lot of offense over the last few moments, but Grayson Waller misses wildly off the avalanche leg drop. And now a window of opportunity for the challengers to get back into the driver's seat. Oof. Maybe spoke too soon. Oh, and Frazier with a super kick. Both of these men down and out momentarily as Nathan Frazier gets a much needed tag to Axiom. It is now up to Axiom to try to get back into this matchup for the challengers. Look at the speed. Grayson Waller looking like he doesn't know what hit him. Axiom saying, where are you going? I can only win the titles between the ropes. Waller back into the ring. Met with a flying axe hammer. Nathan Frazier getting the hell beat out of him over the last few minutes makes a much needed tag to his tag team partner. And now all the pressure is on the shoulders of your mass superstar on center stage here at Battleground. Go for the German, nobody home. Grayson Waller goes behind as they jock for position and a neck breaker. Stop it, Axiom dead in his tracks. And great tag team matchup so far between the champions and the challengers. We were just last night on SmackDown, we saw another great tag team battle. Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde picking up a huge victory over Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford of the Street Profits. A show-stealing matchup 24 hours ago. Wait a minute. A town down. Within a blink of an eye, this match could be over. Not if Nathan Frazier's got anything to say about it. Frazier and Axiom finding out what it means to be a tag team tonight. Saving each other's backs back and forth in this matchup. Some close calls for the challengers. This thing would have been over with multiple times if it weren't for one saving the other. This is where partnerships are born. This is where brotherho brotherhoods are born in the midst of battle. Axiom and Nathan Frazier may be a new tag team, but they're working like an experienced one tonight. Axiom trying to shake off the cobwebs. He's got Austin Theory on his shoulders. Oof! Right down on the canvas. And now look at this. Stretching out Austin Theory. Going for a submission hold here. I don't know if he's got enough left in the tank to hold on. In theory, the obvious stronger competitor. Well, great effort by one half of the challengers, but a lot might have been taken out off that A-Town down a few moments ago. Axiom trying to create some distance. Now into the corner he goes. Pace starting to slow down a little bit as the challengers are feeling the fatigue start to set in, but they got to rev up the engines here and do what they do best. Tilt to whirl, head scissors, Austin Theory down for his trouble. Poison run into Grayson Waller. Waller tagged in and dropped on his dome. Oh, thrust kick, the same one that pinned Roy Mysterio number of weeks ago on the blue brand. And within mere inches of new tag team champions being crowned.
Axiom with this matchup in the palm of his hands. Laying out Austin Theory with the head scissors. Theory made the tag. Immediately drops Waller with the poison Rana. Hits that thrust kick to the jaw. Unfortunately, the Aussie icon able to survive. Within inches of winning the WWE Tag Team titles. And now Nathan Frazier. Tag made to Axiom. See if Axiom can pick up where he left off a few moments ago. Realizing Grayson Waller may be near the end of this here. Axiom going off the top, but Waller moved out of the way at the last second. Crash and burn. They don't call it high risk, high reward for nothing. Now Grayson Waller, once again slowing things down, taking the turnbuckle pad off, A-Town down under, never been, never been afraid, excuse me, to get their hands dirty. And just like that, the Golden One Center has been taken out of this matchup by hands of A-Town down under. The champions not looking to allow the challengers to rally. And Axiom going for a ride. Certainly not the kind of soaring through the sky he would like to do. That was the power of Theory and Waller that time. And Adam and Austin Theory with a cheap shot on Nathan Frazier. Trying to divide and conquer. Frazier goes down. Axiom trying to drag himself back into the ring. And wait a minute here. Theory allowed Axiom to get some R and R. Suplex to the outside. A great maneuver. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Strength being shown from within, from one half of the challengers, as Axiom muscles up Theory. Now gets them back inside the squared circle. Axiom's got to capitalize. You got to believe that took a lot out of one half of the champions that time. Into the corner. Tagged back to Nathan Frazier, who's got to be ticked off after that cheap shot a few moments ago. Goes behind Austin Theory, trying to find his way out of enemy territory. Nathan Frazier trying to keep his foot on the gas pedal. The challengers have an opportunity and not looking to see it fall through their hands. Nice swing blade, Nathan Frazier going up top. Swan time bomb! Into the cover, Grayson Waller breaking things up. How close have we been to a conclusion in this tag team title match? And Frazier, all's fair in love and war, knocking Grayson Waller off the apron. And now Frazier with Austin Theory in his grasp, bringing him to enemy territory. The Aussie icon laid out at ringside, however. Look at this! Springboard! Frankenstein! New champions! Not just yet! Austin Theory with the shoulder up! These two teams leaving it all in the squared circle tonight! Nathan Frazier, the Swanton Bomb, the Springboard Frankensteiner, neither of it enough! Frazier into the ropes and Austin Theory knocking him down to size! Austin Theory just trying to find a way back into this matchup. Tag made to Grayson Waller. The Aussie icon who was knocked off the apron a few moments ago. Blockbuster on Prettier for the second time of the match. This time between the confines of the ropes. A-Town down under. Retain the tag team titles. What a tag team matchup tonight in Sacramento. Axiom and Nathan Frazier leaving it all on the line. A great showing from that new tag team. But unfortunately for those cruiserweights, they fall short in their efforts as the WWE Tag Team Championships remain with Grayson Waller and Austin Theory.
A display of fireworks like no other as Monday Night Raw rolls into the Frost Bank Center in San Antonio Memorial Day weekend for a live premiere event at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Memorial Day, May 27th. It is All-Star Raw from San Antonio. The road to King of the Ring gonna be a tumultuous one at that. And Raw's not the only one having the fun as we shift focus to Friday Night SmackDown. It is Super SmackDown, Friday night, June the 7th, live at 5 p.m. Eastern time for one of the biggest SmackDown editions of all time, Estadio Azteca. Mexico City, Mexico, over 50,000 expected for what will be one of the biggest live premiere events in the history of Friday Night Smackdown. It is certainly exciting times on the Friday Night SmackDown brand. And as this SmackDown exclusive event of Battleground continues, who will be heading into Mexico City on Friday night, June the 7th as the United States Champion? The number one contender, he is him, Carmelo Hayes. One of SmackDown's newest acquisitions, thanks to the WWE Draft a number of weeks ago. Mellow SmackDown debut, he went one-on-one -on -one with the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, Roman Reigns. Went down in a blades of glory on that night. But seven nights later, bounced back in the biggest way possible. An eight-man over the top rope battle royal to determine Ricochet's number one contender for the red, white, blue, and gold. And who was the last man standing? That would be the man in the orange and the gold, Carmelo Hayes. And the X Factor in this matchup, of course, Trick Williams. Ricochet is going to have to have eyes in the back of his head tonight. Melo's pursuit of championship gold led him to some certainly unfavorable actions on Monday Night Raw, leading to an encounter with Sami Zayn the night he was drafted to Friday Night SmackDown. Melo coming up short when he was a part of the red brand going after the Intercontinental title, but now a part of SmackDown with a new championship goal in mind. And for the first time since winning the title, last month on the blue brand, the human highlight reel, the highlight of the night, the one, the only, Ricochet defends the United States Championship. These two men, no strangers to each other. A few years removed from their one and only encounter, which happened during Carmelo Hayes' stint in NXT as the North American Champion. But now the roles have been reversed. Carmelo Hayes the challenger, Ricochet the champion, and certainly a deserving one at that was chasing that United States Championship for quite some time on SmackDown and finally realized that dream in a phenomenal matchup against the former champion AJ Styles who was sent packing to Monday Night Raw alongside his OC brothers. But now Ricochet defends the gold for the very first time since claiming it. And it may be his one and only defense against the one of one that is the number one contender, Carmelo Hayes. Certainly a highly anticipated collision across the WWE Universe. These two men set to tear down the house here at the Golden One Center. Introducing the challenger from Boston, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 210 pounds, Carmelo Hayes. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, Weighing in at 190 pounds, the WWE United States Champion, Ricochet! Our third of five championships being decided tonight at Battleground. We said at the top of the hour that the landscape of SmackDown could be changed by the end of the night. 
And with Ricochet handing over that United States Championship, could it have a new owner? Could that man, Carrello Hayes, in his first attempt, be leaving with the red, white, blue, and gold? A question that we remain an answer to. Ricochet's got to keep eyes in the back of his head. The X Factor Trick Williams at ringside. Can Ricochet overcome this obstacle here tonight? The bell has sounded. We are underway. Carmelo Hayes became the number one contender only eight nights ago on SmackDown. Has Ricochet, as well as the challenger, had enough time to prepare for one another? Can't say there's any personal beef between these two men, at least not yet. There may be if Trick Williams has anything to say about it. Hopefully he just stays at ringside and minds his own, but if we know anything about the TMG, the Trick Mello gang always willing to get their hands dirty. This is all about the United States Championship tonight. Two extraordinary athletes fighting over that prestigious gold. Ricochet to the outside, and Carmelo Hayes not wasting any time, trying to beat Ricochet at his own game. They don't call Melo a one of one for nothing. Did all there was to do down in NXT. NXT champion, North American champion, cruiserweight champion, main eventing, Premium live events across the black and gold brand. One year ago was drafted to Monday Night Raw. Certainly made some waves on the red brand. And over the last few months, Carmelo Hayes' stock has been continuing to rise. Now a part of Friday Night SmackDown. Will he win his first championship a part of the main roster? All remains to be seen. So far, so good. It has been all Melo in this title matchup tonight at Battleground. Cover here, Ricochet get the shoulder up. You know one thing about Ricochet is that he is resilient. You knock him down, he's gonna keep on getting up. Had a hell of a matchup with AJ Styles back at WrestleMania and even when he fell short in his pursuit of the United States Championship, Ricochet got himself up, brushed himself off, earned another shot, and took down AJ Styles just a number of weeks ago on SmackDown. Only so much time to bask in the glory of that victory as the challengers are now a-coming. The target is on the back of Ricochet. And now the championship is on the line, and there's a corkscrew to the outside. Anything you can do, I can do better. Ricochet and Carmelo Hayes looking to ditch the punishment in the early moments of this matchup. Acai Moonsault by the one and only. This is going to be an athletic display if we ever saw one between the champion and the challenger here at Battleground. On the ropes, wow, what a maneuver by Ricochet. Into the cover to retain the United States Championship, not just yet. Carmelo Hayes striking first in the early moments of this matchup. Ricochet now turning the tables. Ricochet tell telling Carmelo Hayes, this is my show. Friday Night Smackdown, and it's my title, and I ain't looking to give it up on my first encounter as champion. Oof. Missed it with the drop kick, and Carmelo Hayes one-upping Ricochet that time. No moss on the springboard for the one and only, and Carmelo Hayes delivers his own. Just finding out moments ago, one of the biggest Smackdowns of all time, going to be going down on the road to King of the Ring. Friday night, June the 7th. We are going to be in an Estado Azteca, if I'm saying that correctly. In Mexico City, Mexico. Super Smackdown, 50,000 already expected. Who is going to be walking into that event as the United States Champion? Camelo Hayes into the cover. Ricochet able to survive again. We talked about these two men have had a one-on-one -on -one encounter before. About two years ago in NXT, Carmelo Hayes was the victor on that night! And may have just secured victory on this night! Frog splash by the challenger, but again, Ricochet kicks out. A lot of pinfall attempts by Melo in this matchup. Ricochet continuing to survive. Melo knows he can beat Ricochet, but can he beat this Ricochet? Somebody who has been on the rise on SmackDown for quite some time. Melo Hayes is trying to stop Ricochet dead in his tracks. 
It's been an athletic display since the opening bell. Mello really trying to one-up Ricochet here. Going for a second frog splash, not to be delivered. Carmelo Hayes going to the well too many times. The one and only has been there, done that. And now ready to bring this fight to the outside again. Dropping Mello right on the apron. Ricochet's got to do what he got to do to wear down the challenger. If that means dropping him on the hardest part of the ring, then so be it. And now going flying off said part. We saw Ricochet throw caution in the wind time and time again in that matchup with AJ Styles on SmackDown a number of weeks ago just to win the United States title. Imagine what Ricochet is willing to do to keep the gold. Another springboard. Shooting star, lateral press, cover. Not just yet. Two extraordinary talents clashing over a title that has been held by so many greats of this industry. The United States Championship, a long lineage of legends and Hall of Famers. Ricochet has added his name once again to that list of so many great talents. Carmelo Hayes looking to be next in line. Not if Ricochet's got anything to say about it. Taking Melo over the top rope. Wait a minute here. Flosberry flop by the champion. We saw Ricochet pull out that very maneuver against AJ Styles on SmackDown. And as we said, Ricochet was willing to do anything he had to do to win the title. And right there, with the same mentality, willing to do anything he's got to do to keep it. Mello counters. Carmelo Hayes dropping Ricochet with the DDT. My goodness. Ricochet was going for something that time. Jockeying for position on the apron. Mello outsmarting him with the slingshot. These two men leaving no stone unturned in this matchup. Willing to do anything they got to do to leave with the United States Championship. Of course, as this matchup progresses, you see fatigue starting to set in. Both men starting to move a little bit slower this time. Ricochet again dropping his body on the rib cage of Carmelo Hayes. Man can't breathe, he can't fight. Mello on spaghetti legs, on the shoulders. Ricochet going for a little cradle shock to retain. Not to be denied is one of SmackDown's newest acquisitions. Carmelo Hayes desperately popping the shoulder off the canvas. Ricochet trying to rally here in the King City of Sacramento. And now wait a minute here. Trick Williams said, all right, time to get involved, trying to wave, trying to scream, trying to do anything he's got to do to distract the champion. Carmelo Hayes taking advantage of the back being turned. Trick Williams, the X Factor, aided Carmelo Hayes to eventually becoming the number one contender for Sami Zayn's Intercontinental Championship over on Raw. Zayn got lucky that Trick Williams was barred from ringside when the title was on the line, but it's a different ball game here on SmackDown, and Melo does not miss. Melo on top could be looking for a slam. Dunk a leg drop to the back of the head. Pinfall, wait a minute here. Damn boots are on the ropes. Ricochet able to get the shoulder up. He almost got screwed over in a matter of moments. Drop kick denied. Recoil. To retain. And now Mello with the shoulder up. My, oh my, do we have a barn burner on our hands for the United States Championship here tonight. Oh my goodness, did you see Ricochet? The height, the distance. It's as if the fire has been lit underneath Ricochet after Trick Williams stuck his nose into this matchup and Mello was in with, within inches of taking advantage and winning the gold. That leg drop to the back of the dome was almost it. And Melo even putting the feet on the ropes, showing how desperate he is to win championship gold. Ricochet able to survive. 
Got the recoil knee, unfortunately was not to be. And now Melo finding himself back in control of this championship matchup. Regardless of the interaction with Trick Williams and the feet on the ropes by Melo, take away the dirty antics. We have had one hell of a contest between these two superstars, an athletic display between champion and challenger. Another reversal by Melo. First 48, Ricochet goes exploding onto the canvas. And Mella once again, right there at the finish line to win the gold, but Ricochet pulling him right back. First 48 attempt, obviously doing damage, but not enough to get the exclamation point on this match. Now Mello set to the corner. Able to avoid whatever Ricochet had in mind. Springboard, down goes the champion once again. Carmelo Hayes, wheels are turning. Could be going for a second leg drop, not to be. This match has been very back and forth the last few moments. Shooting star by the champion once again. Just trying to wear down Carmelo Hayes. And back into the corner. Ricochet's wheels are obviously spinning. Obviously wants to deliver an impactful maneuver. What has he got in mind here? Meeting Mello on the top rope. Oh my, neck breaker from the heavens. Sacramento blowing the roof off the golden one center as Ricochet back to the top. Shooting star press delivers. And the United States Championship remains around the waist of the one and only. Carmelo Hayes giving it a hell of a fight and even tried to pull the rug out from me underneath the feet of the champion. But Ricochet surviving the numbers and outlasting the fight of the challenger. Here is your winner and still WWE United States Ricochet. Ricochet fought long and hard to obtain the United States Championship over the last few months on SmackDown. And in his very first defense, you had to believe there was going to be nothing that would stop the human highlight reel from regaining his gold here at Battleground. Carmelo Hayes is going to live to fight another day, but tonight belongs to the highlight of the night. The rise of Ricochet has happened before our very eyes. A deserving champion of the red, white, blue, and gold. Well, it has been one hell of a night here in Sacramento, California, but as we said at the top of the evening, championships, bragging rights, and retribution would hang in the balance. And coming up next here at the SmackDown exclusive battleground, that retribution is to be had. Locked inside the confines of a solid steel cage brings the story of the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes and the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. This story has been developing month in and month out on SmackDown and has only gotten more dangerous since the month of January. Both looking to eliminate the other. Cody Rhodes looking for his retribution after what happened three weeks ago in San Juan, Puerto Rico at Backlash. You know, it all started a few months ago on SmackDown when Cody Rhodes was sent home in an ambulance thanks to an ambush from Randy Orton, who sent him off a ledge through a spotlight in the backstage area. Cody Rhodes was not looking to let lightning strike twice. Unfortunately, we led to the events of three weeks ago in the Coliseum in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in one of the most brutal matches I think the WWE has ever bared witness to. Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton beat each other from pillar to post. As we mentioned, this story has been developing month in and month out on SmackDown. Randy Orton looking to use Cody Rhodes as a stepping stone to remind the WWE Universe that he can still compete at a high level. Cody Rhodes not looking to allow Randy Orton to use him as that stepping stone and not looking to allow Randy Orton to leave the lasting image of Cody Rhodes going home in an ambulance. 
Unfortunately, that was the lasting image three weeks ago as Orton was successful in his pursuit, but Cody Rhodes came back for his pound of flesh just eight nights ago on SmackDown. An attack from behind, lowering the steel cage, trapping Randy Orton, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, face your demons head on. Cody Rhodes threw down the gauntlet, and now the American Nightmare and the Apex Predator meet inside the confines of a solid, unforgiving, cold-hearted steel cage. Randy Orton looking to write the final chapter of the American Nightmare's career here tonight. The following contest is a steel cage match. Making his way to the ring from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 275 pounds, the fighter, Randy Orton. Unsuccessful. In high profile occasions throughout 2023, led Randy Orton to blow a gasket when he lost a matchup against Cody Rhodes on SmackDown in January of this year. He took that aggression out on the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes in a backstage assault, eliminating Cody Rhodes for competition for upwards of a month, costing Cody Rhodes an opportunity to main event WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes came back for his vengeance was able to defeat Randy Orton at the grandest stage. But that loss once again sent Randy Orton to a place inside of his mind that I don't think anybody wants to visit. Another loss for Randy just made him more cold-hearted, just made him more sadistic. And we saw that firsthand three weeks ago at Backlash for the second time in a matter of months, sending Cody Rhodes home in an ambulance. Well, Cody Rhodes refuses to let his family bear witness to a lasting image of him laying up in a hospital bed thanks to that man, the apex predator. Cody Rhodes is out for his pound of flesh tonight while Randy Orton looks to finally bury this chapter and I am sure move on to championship aspirations. The history between these two men goes far and wide, but the days of legacy are long gone. The American Nightmare, a completely different animal than the Viper once raised, and he has found that out time and time again throughout 2024. This has simply become a battle of tearing each other apart and getting the last laugh. Cody Rhodes looking to write a different story than the one Randy Orton tried to tell three weeks ago in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds. You know, ever since Cody Rhodes returned to the WWE about 14 months ago, he has certainly been a superstar that a lot of other superstars are looking to use as a stepping stone in their own careers, whether it was Austin Theory in 2023, whether it was Gunther during his United States Championship reign, whether it was AJ Styles, now Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes attracts superstardom, and that says volumes about the superstar that the American Nightmare has become. Randy Orton plagued with failure throughout 2023. And when he was plagued with failure against the American Nightmare, his actions only brought him right back to the past. Cody looking to finish his story his own way. Randy Orton looking to eradicate Cody Rhodes from competition. Who wants it more here tonight? Sometimes it all comes down to a game of fisticuffs. It all comes down to the war on the battlegrounds. And this is what this business, unfortunately, is all about at times. Sometimes it's about the championships and the accolades. Other times it is about proving you are better than your opposer. And unfortunately for these two men tonight, this rivalry has reached a violent level. One loss in the lead up to the Elimination Chamber back in January for Randy Orton against Cody Rhodes has brought us on a very untold violent story. 
Now the American Nightmare looking for his payback three weeks after he was sent home in an ambulance. Randy Orton looking to finally bury the past of the American Nightmare tonight. Of course, multiple ways to win this steel cage matchups tonight. Pinfall, submission, or escape in the confines of the steel walls surrounding the ring. I am sure Randy Orton does not have a preference on how he would like to try to win this matchup as long as he defeats Cody Rhodes, proving that he is better than Cody Rhodes, proving that he still has what it takes to compete at the highest level here in WWE, proving that he is still one of the most dangerous superstars walking the planet today, and finally putting Cody Rhodes behind him. The American Nightmare, I'm sure, would love to put Randy Orton behind him as well and move on to the next stage in his SmackDown career. When you're sent home in an ambulance by hands of another man, you cannot allow that man to get away with it. At least that's the mind of Cody Rhodes. Randy Orton trying to avoid that steel cage by any means necessary. Obviously, the dangers of this matchup loom around all four corners. Nice scoop and a slam by the American Nightmare. Cody Rhodes, former United States champion, very well had aspirations to challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship several months ago and may have done so had it not been for Randy Orton eliminating him from competing inside the Elimination Chamber. Back and forth, these two men just throwing hands in the early moments of this matchup. You had to expect this aggression from both sides of the squared circle. Feud that has been very chaotic on Friday nights, to say the least. I mean, how many times have we seen an ambush, a brawl? These two men just out to tear each other apart once and for all here tonight. Randy Orton. I'm sure if he has his way in this matchup, would love to set the pace and beat down Cody Rhodes limb by limb. Certainly a dangerous superstar is Randy Orton. That goes without saying, but Orton out to prove he's more dangerous than ever. But three weeks ago in San Juan, Puerto Rico, didn't already send that message to the SmackDown locker room. Randy Orton looking to do so again tonight. Cody Rhodes not looking to do it at his expense. American Nightmare and Randy Orton, desperate for victory, desperate to be the one getting the last laugh. And Orton, of course, successful eight nights ago on SmackDown. Count out victory over the almighty Bobby Lashley. A celebration that was short-lived thanks to Cody Rhodes and the emergence of the steel cage that was lowered from the ceiling. Disaster kick knocking Randy Orton down momentarily. Cody Rhodes trying to rev up the engines here as just in that short moment, Randy Orton, as we mentioned, began to set the pace for this matchup. Something Cody Rhodes cannot allow. Orton takes the WWE Universe out of this thing, crushes the will and the hopes of his opponent. It very well could be doomsday for Cody Rhodes. However, Cody Rhodes the aggressor right now and Randy Orton's flesh coming in contact with the cage. At any moment, that cage could rip the flesh apart. Open wounds could become a problem in this cage match tonight at Battleground. The beatdown commences. And the steel cage certainly goes without saying, but keeping these men grounded tonight, we saw how chaotic things could be three weeks ago in San Juan, Puerto Rico in that ambulance match. The brawl was taken all around ringside, in the ring and out of it, and then of course inside the ambulance. But tonight, it happens between the ropes, and Cody Rhodes willing to do whatever he's got to do to pick apart Randy Orton. I believe Orton can't get a good vantage point, but I believe he may have been busted open after coming in contact with that cage moments ago. Gonna need a closer look. Nonetheless, if Orton does have an open wound, that certainly becomes a target. And obviously, as we talked about earlier tonight in that last man standing match between Dragunov and McDonough, when the blood starts to shed, fatigue sets in. It certainly cannot go well as this match gets into deep waters. On the top, Cody Rhodes starting to have his way. The wheels are turning for the American Nightmare and Sacramento coming alive. Randy Orton did not want this kind of rally. 
Randy Orton looking to stop it dead in its tracks. And yes, I believe Randy Orton has been busted wide open on the corner of the right eye. But Randy Orton's coming unglued regardless. It could play a factor in fatigue, or Randy Orton could smell the blood and could be woken up by his own flesh and wound. The fury of the Viper as Orton begins to come alive could be the worst case scenario for the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. These two men out to destroy each other and get the last laugh and move on with their careers on Friday Night SmackDown. So much opportunity looming in the distance on Friday night's Super SmackDown in Mexico City next month. The King of the Ring tournament, a summer of excitement, getting ready to kick off. Both of these men looking to end this story on their own accord. Wait a minute, Randy Orton, I believe, is calling for the door, ready to walk out of this thing and get the victory. If those boots touch the floor, we would have a victor, but Cody Rose not looking to allow that just yet. Remember pinfall submission or the escape to be victorious tonight. Randy Orton is getting ready to walk down the aisle with his hand raised high, but Cody Rhodes looking to stop him. Unfortunately, not looking to keep that momentum up. Randy Orton, fall away slam. A shot right to the American Nightmare. And every time Cody Rhodes starts to rally, Randy Orton, as fast as he can, trying to stop Cody Rhodes. Said it before, we'll say it again. Orton looking to take the WWE Universe out of this. American Nightmare has certainly become one of the faces of Friday nights and a fan favorite across the globe. Randy Orton feels, or at least he may feel, that it's him versus the Universe tonight. The beatdown on Cody Rose continues. And this is how Randy Orton likes it. This is how Randy Orton prays for it. Looking to see his opponent. Just raving in pain on the canvas. Now those signature stomps to every limb that the American Nightmare has attached to his flesh. And I'm dropping the knee. Cody Rhodes has had his offense, but Randy Orton has been the aggressor. RKO by the Viper. And Cody Rhodes able to get the shoulder up and a count of two. Charles Robinson calling it from right outside the door. That's a two count. Cody's still into this thing. Frustration starting to be showed. Orton is hearing voices in his head. Orton stopped the rally of the American Nightmare. Stomped his heart out a few moments ago. The RKO, unfortunately not enough. And Randy Orton's gonna have to find another way to keep down this young son of a bitch. Cody Rhodes, not the same man that Randy Orton once taught. Orton's been finding that out firsthand over the last couple of months that the American Nightmare, a man that stands on his own. And Cody Rhodes now, trying to get back into this matchup. The toughness of Cody Rhodes on display tonight. Off the top with the moonsault. Resilient as all hell. And now Cody Rhodes, scale on the side of the cage. I don't think he's going for an escape. He's got his eyes out of his peripheral on Orton and drops an axe hammer. Cody using the cage for elevation. Now Randy Orton is on the receiving end of a fury from the American Nightmare. Cody Rhodes scaling the walls. Is he going for the escape or are his wheels turning? Nothing sticks it to Randy Orton more than victory. That is what started this whole thing was a Cody Rhodes win months ago on SmackDown. Randy Orton, whatever Cody's got in mind, whether it be escape or something more dangerous, Orton not looking to find out. Both these men in a precarious situation. Cody right off the cage beams. And now Randy Orton all alone as he scales the cage wall. Orton absolutely going for escape, going for victory. Cody Rhodes hot in pursuit. The steel cage match 
at many a times can be a race to the finish line. Now Cody stopping Orton. Randy Orton with his bell wrong. Oh no! Powerbomb by Cody! Again, the toughness, the resilience. And now, the pedigree on Randy Orton. And Cody into the cover. And Randy Orton gets the shoulder up. Cody was smart to go for the exclamation point after that power bomb. Delivered the cover after the pedigree. Unfortunately, Randy Orton is still alive. Now Cody once again. Oh no, off the cage from the middle of the top rope, dropping an elbow. Looking to cut the head off the snake. And Cody Rhodes looking to write the final chapter of this story. Trying to get his balance on that cage, easier said than done. Cody on top, Randy Orton better scurry up. Cody Rhodes trying to make sure he doesn't risk his career falling from the heavens. Now Randy Orton, wait a minute. Orton knocked down the size. Wait a minute, I don't think Cody's going for an elimination. Cody could have easily won this matchup, but the American Nightmare has different plans. Eliminate Randy Orton. Finish the story from the top of the cage. Holy hell! Cody! Crossroads! Randy Orton still in this match! A disappointed gasp here in the Golden One Center from this Sacramento crowd after Cody Rhodes risk it all Follows up with the crossroads to try to eliminate Randy Orton. Right into the cage. The match may not be over, but an opportunity to deal more punishment. Into the beam. Randy Orton. We said it before, we'll say it again. Surviving, but certainly not thriving. Cody Rhodes, reversal. Cody avoids the cage. But enough wherewithal, the Viper does have into the reverse Boston this time. Cody Rhodes may be tapping out or may be passing out to end this story, not on the good note. Cody picks the ankle. Who's gonna get the first blow or a jockey for position? And this has been a brutal fight since the opening bell has this steel cage match. I don't know what Randy Orton's got in mind here. Cody Rhodes is down, Orton on in it from the top, uncharacteristic from the Viper. And Cody Rhodes able to kick out again. Orton is furious inside the cage. How much do these men have left? This is not their first encounter. They know each other's playbooks very well and have survived some of the best from each other. And another close call off the DDT, but Cody Rhodes with anything left in the tank. And now Randy Orton. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell? Orton with a punt kick. You gotta be kidding me. That son of a bitch. Randy Orton desperately wanted victory. And he just punt kicked Cody Rhodes to hell. That right there is gonna put Cody Rhodes on the shelf for a number of weeks. And Randy Orton doesn't give a damn. Cody Rhodes may have won some battles, but over the last three weeks, Randy Orton may have won the war. Inside the steel cage, the snake slithered to victory. The Viper was coiled and he struck. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes gave it his all. 
but a punt kick writes the final story. Coming up next here in Sacramento, the Women's World Championship is on the line as Raquel Rodriguez gets another crack at the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. This is the WrestleMania rematch. Raquel Rodriguez was within inches of winning the gold in her home state of Texas two months ago at the grandest stage of them all. Shayna Baszler knows that. Shayna Baszler knows that Raquel was her toughest challenge yet. And I believe that is why Shayna Baszler did this. We take you back to a few weeks ago. Raquel Rodriguez really solidifying herself as a deserving number one contender for the women's world title. A victory over Shotzi on SmackDown, but an extremely short-lived celebration as Shayna Baszler hit the ring and cracked Raquel over the dome with the Women's World Championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it's for the WWE Women's World Championship. Is Shayna Baszler nervous? Does she believe Raquel Rodriguez's time is a coming? We are gonna find out live and in living color here in Sacramento, California. 2024 has certainly been a breakout year for Raquel Rodriguez. Winning the Elimination Chamber back in January, tapping out Bianca Belair at the end of that matchup, breaking up victories on SmackDown, over names like Shotzi and Zoe Stark, among others. Raquel Rodriguez earned her opportunity the hard way to challenge Shayna Baszler for the Women's World Championship back at WrestleMania. And credit where credit's due, Raquel gave the performance of her lifetime, gave everything she had in her arsenal. But the Queen of Spades just showed on that night why she has held the Women's World Championship with a stranglehold for 167 days. And will it be and counting? Whether it was the WWE Women's title or the Women's World title, for the better part of a year, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, has held championship gold around her waist. Many have called her the inevitable of the women's division. No matter how good you are, are you Shayna Baszler good? Bianca Belair, Raquel Rodriguez, Zelina Vega, all successful to title defenses for that woman right there. Even back when she was WWE Women's Champion last summer, turning away Liv Morgan and Asuka and Candice LeRae, Shayna Baszler has put together an impressive resume as a champion. But as we saw in the highlights moments ago, Shayna Baszler, uncharacteristic of her, attacking her opponent from behind with the Women's World Championship. Is Shayna Baszler nervous? Does Shayna Baszler believe, as many other do, that Raquel Rodriguez was the one to take her down at WrestleMania? If Shayna Baszler is in her own head and is letting Raquel Rodriguez and her pursuit of the gold affect her confidence, then Baszler may crumble under this championship match tonight. Easier said than done, Baszler has been great. Introducing the challenger from Rio Grande Valley, Texas, Championship opportunities don't come around every day. Raquel Rodriguez has a second crack at the gold. It's put up or shut up tonight for the number one contender. And whether Shayna Baszler believes that Raquel is her match, whether Shayna Baszler looks at WrestleMania and believes she just survived the challenger, that was then, this is now. The Women's World Championship is on the line. Does Raquel Rodriguez have what it takes to keep down the queen? Or is Shayna Baszler just that damn good? 
Bell has sounded. We are underway with this WrestleMania rematch here in the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California. SmackDown's battleground has been off the chart. The women taking center stage. It's certainly been a shocking, exciting night to say the least here in Sacramento. And Shayna Baszler looking to get out of the gate early and set the precedent for this matchup. Trying to kill the confidence of the challenger. Raquel Rodriguez took the loss on the chin at WrestleMania and bounced back to earn herself a championship opportunity. Shayna Baszler needs to get out of the gate and remind Raquel Rodriguez just what the result was back in AT&T Stadium. You talked about Shayna Baszler's confidence possibly being rattled knowing Raquel Rodriguez gave her a run for her money at WrestleMania. Shayna Baszler could be looking to kill the confidence of the challenger in the early going. All remains to be seen. Certainly a great matchup for the champion and the challenger. Raquel Rodriguez has been red hot in 2024. Minus that one blemish at the grandest stage, nobody has been able to turn away the challenge of the up and comer. The former NXT Women's Champion has smelled championship gold in the past, but Shayna Baszler has been her roadblock to taking the next step. You know, we talk about WrestleMania and the matchup these two women had there, and that certainly plays a big factor in their individual story. But go back 167 days ago, November the 19th, at Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden, where Shayna Baszler and Raquel Rodriguez were the final two in a fatal four-way elimination match to crown the women's world champion. Raquel had eliminated the other two participants on that night, however, was tapped out by Shayna Baszler in Madison Square Garden. The same result happened at WrestleMania. Can Raquel Rodriguez survive the submission specialist? Or will it be another night where Shayna Baszler reigns supreme? Right now, Raquel Rodriguez just trying to get those engines fired up. Doing a good job so far. Knocking down the champion. One thing to knock Shayna Baszler down, a whole other thing to keep her there. Shayna Baszler has fought some of the best. She has beaten some of the best. That even includes her challenger tonight. And Raquel Rodriguez showcasing early on that she is willing to do anything to leave Sacramento as the new women's world champion. No stone looking to go unturned. Raquel has been daydreaming about this matchup. Daydreaming about becoming champion. And I'm sure has relived the nightmares of Survivor Series and WrestleMania time and time again. This matchup tonight, no matter the result, a long time coming. Who is truly the head honcho on Friday Night SmackDown? Shayna Baszler certainly putting herself a impressive resume together. Whether it was as the WWE Women's Champion across both brands or exclusively on SmackDown as the Women's World Champion. Baszler has become a force to be reckoned with. The intimidation factor absolutely there. The inevitable, the nickname she has earned. And it's because of maneuvers like that, the spear cut Raquel in half only for a one count. Raquel Rodriguez pulled out every move in her arsenal back in WrestleMania to try to keep down Shayna Baszler. It wasn't enough. What wrinkle has Raquel Rodriguez added to her arsenal tonight to try to keep down the Queen of Spades? And on the flip side, has Shayna Baszler added any new repertoires to try to throw Raquel off her game? It was the Carafuda clutch that tapped her out at Survivor Series in November. It was that knee to the back and really raking on Raquel Rodriguez's knee at WrestleMania that forced Raquel to tap out of the grandest stage. Submission specialist is Shayna Baszler. Has she added any new maneuvers to that repertoire that Raquel may not see coming? Obvious size and strength in the corner of the challenger. She showcases right there. Raquel Rodriguez, all the confidence in the world, believes that tonight is her night. And Shayna Baszler, now more than ever, needs to not allow a rally from Raquel Rodriguez. Baszler trying to create some distance, but Raquel 
Looking laser focused on the task at hand. My goodness. Nothing pretty about that. Just ragdoll on the women's world champion on the outside. Raquel Rodriguez. Wait a minute. Getting caught. Baszler turning the challenger inside out on the floor of the Golden One Center. That could be a knockout blow as Raquel Rodriguez brought into the ring. Just like that, within a snap of the fingers, Shayna Baszler finds herself back in control of this match. Oh no, Baszler could be looking for the kill. Kick to the rib cage. Raquel's going up. She's going down. Karafuda clutch locked in. The maneuver that won Shayna Baszler, the Women's World Championship, by tapping out Raquel Rodriguez at Survivor Series 167 days ago. Raquel Rodriguez in trouble. She's got to use her size and strength to try to get out of this stranglehold. Raquel throwing a couple elbows, trying to create some distance. The challenger still alive. Close call that time by the Queen of Spades. Shayna Baszler locking in that Carafuda clutch. You see Raquel Rodriguez was able to create the distance. However, obviously, still trying to get her air back in her lungs. Doesn't have enough left in the tank to capitalize on that distance that was made. Nonetheless, Shayna Baszler maintains control over the hungry challenger. Just trying to wear down Raquel that much more. We've seen Shayna Baszler in the past try to work on the arms of Raquel Rodriguez, take out the power game. Raquel has fought and through it. Maybe Shayna Baszler is coming in with a similar game plan tonight. All remains to be seen. Both women going for game-changing shots. Raquel Rodriguez, great agility. Dropkick takes the champion down momentarily. The engines are moving now. Raquel Rodriguez with a big boot to Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Into the corner goes Shayna. Hoisted on the top rope. This is where the champion, or I should say the challenger, thrives. The strength on display. Press slam. Baszler face first off the canvas. But not enough to win the title just yet. I'll tell you what, this Sacramento crowd has been fueling these SmackDown superstars all night long. A great energy in the Golden One Center on Saturday night, May the 4th, 2024 for the SmackDown exclusive battleground. We are in the midst of our co-main event for the Women's World Championship. Raquel Rodriguez taking on Shayna Baszler in a highly anticipated WrestleMania rematch. Shayna Baszler down on the outside. Raquel Rodriguez with her eyes locked, full head of steam. Another big boot to the champion. We have bared witness to a war between these two women in the past. They are picking up right where they left off at AT&T Stadium back in the early part of March. Spine buster delivered. And Shayna Baszler brung back inside the ring. The challenger may be nearing her chance to become women's world champion. Shayna Baszler's bell may be rocked. This may be Shayna Baszler's demise tonight. It was back at WrestleMania. We've been saying it ever since. Raquel gave Shayna the best run for her money. We have seen anybody give the queen of spades. Raquel is reminding us why before our very eyes. Who was able to do that other than Raquel Rodriguez to Shayna Baszler? Double hand, show slam. Count it, ref. Within inches of the gold, an enthusiastic kick out as Shayna Baszler may have been seeing her championship slip away. Another close call on this matchup tonight. Raquel's got to keep the pressure on the champion. Has been in firm control the last few minutes. Shayna Baszler's got no answer for the strength and the size of a hungry, motivated challenger. Superplex off the top. 
Shayna Baszler's down. Raquel looking to capitalize. New women's world champion on the horizon. Once again, Shayna Baszler hoists the shoulder off the canvas. This matchup rolls on. What has Raquel got to do to keep down Shayna Baszler? She gave Baszler everything she had back at WrestleMania, and so far she's been doing the same tonight. Shayna Baszler may just be on a different level. Shayna Baszler may be just that damn good at what she does. But Baszler acted uncharacteristic. We have seen her get in the heads of her challengers in the past. Stare downs, face-to-face -face confrontations. Wait a minute, Tahana Bomb! New champion on the horizon! No, Shayna Baszler! A very unenthusiastic kick out that time, but still is in this match. Man, oh man, this is where superstars are made. As we were saying, Shayna Baszler cracking Raquel over the dome with the Women's World Championship a number of weeks ago. Baszler may be feeling that her time at the top is slipping away, but after surviving a Tahana bomb, the best Raquel has had to offer in her career. Does Raquel have anything left? Is it now Shayna Baszler's time to take over and bring the pressure? The beatdown commences just as Shayna Baszler would like it. The MMA background kicking in for the champion. Tahana Bomb, Tahana Bomb, excuse me, does not bring us to a conclusion, and it may have been Raquel's best hand. Baszler, uncharacteristic again, going to the top, dropping a knee. Damn well may have been on the throat. Raquel Rodriguez with whatever she's got left kicking out. Shayna Baszler is starting to come unglued. And certainly not in a good way. Baszler better be careful. Cannot allow herself to make a mistake. Frustration may be setting in, but she's got to keep her head on straight. We have seen near conclusions multiple times in this matchup so far. Shayna Baszler trying to bring it to a dead end here tonight. Look at Baszler. Nothing pretty right now. Punches and kicks to the limbs. And eyes are locked once again firmly on the challenger. Could be going for a submission hold. Possibly a Carafuda clutch. No mas. Raquel Rodriguez. Three eight separation. Power bomb. Wait a minute. Could be going for a, a gory special. The submission that won her the Elimination Chamber match back in January. Tapping out Bianca Belair. The move that got her her ticket to WrestleMania. But Baszler, they don't call her the submission specialist for nothing. Knows how to use maneuvers. Also knows how to escape them. And just like that, back in control. Shayna Baszler almost amused that Raquel Rodriguez attempted a submission hold. The gory special on the submission specialist herself. Raquel Rodriguez, however, creating distance, not allowing a comeback here. Baszler collapsing in the corner and may have been collapsing under the pressure of this match. Wait a minute. Baszler's dazed. Raquel Rodriguez now. Holy hell, what a neck breaker. And now it's the roll reversal. The eyes locked to the challenger on the champion for a second. Tahana Bomb. We have a new women's world champion. The long, hard road culminates tonight. Raquel Rodriguez may have fallen short at WrestleMania. But that is where superstars are made. She got herself up. She dusted herself off. And she proved she is worthy of being champion. Here is your winner. And the new WWE Women's World Champion, Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel Rodriguez.
outlasting the best Shayna Baszler had to offer. An incredible matchup. And Raquel Rodriguez through grit and glory, surviving the woman who has had a stranglehold on that championship. The new Women's World Champion, live from Sacramento, California. Remember the name of Raquel Rodriguez. Well, of course, tonight is all about the SmackDown brand, but next Saturday night, Monday Night Raw takes center stage in Bakersfield, California for the exclusive Vengeance event. And what a night it is going to be from Monday Night Raw. The World Tag Team Championships on the line in a WrestleMania rematch, Tornado Tag Team style, as Jay and Jimmy of the Usos take on Damian Priest and Finn Balor of the Judgment Day. Chaos to be expected. Meaner than evil, the badass, Braun Breaker, drafted to Raw a number of weeks ago and has been hungry for competition ever since. And he got an answer to that competition. The street champ, Solo Sokoa, throwing down the gauntlet. These two men gonna go toe and to toe to toe next Saturday night. The excitement is palpable. What about this matchup? Reinforce the ring as Big Bronson Reed set to take on the Nigerian giant, Omos. There's only room for one big man on Monday Night Raw. The Intercontinental Championship has been the centerfold of attention for three superstars. And who is gonna be crashing through the tables and surviving next Saturday night? Sami Zayn defends in a tables match against Baron Corbin and the Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross. Well, two egos of the red brand set to collide one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever. The megastar, LA Knight, takes on the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins. Both these men with championship aspirations, but the road goes through one another. And you want to talk about WrestleMania rematches, it is the trilogy fight between the Nightmare Rhea Ripley and the WWE Women's Champion Liv Morgan. The Eradicator has taken a stranglehold over the division without even holding the gold. Imagine what Rhea will be capable of if she wins back the title. And in the main event, the WWE Championship will be on the line as the prize fighter Kevin Owens puts the gold up against the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura's been waiting for this encounter since the month of February. Will he spoil the championship reign of the prize fighter? But we still have a main event clash on hand here tonight. For the first time ever, it is a clash of titans for the World Heavyweight Championship. The head of the table, the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns takes on the Ring General, Gunther. Gunther taking issue, believing that he sits at the head of the table on Friday Night SmackDown. And Gunther has certainly made a case for that. For 167 days, Gunther has been your World Heavyweight Champion turning away the challenges of Drew McIntyre to win the gold at Survivor Series, moving on to take on Hall of Famers such as Edge, future Hall of Famers like Brock Lesnar, your current United States Champion Ricochet. Gunther has been on a dominating tear across Friday Night SmackDown and certainly been an intimidating force at the top of the mountain. And then of course back at WrestleMania Saturday, the rematch that Drew McIntyre waited a long time for, unfortunately, did not go his way. Gunther with a victory in the main event. But Gunther felt disrespected as Roman Reigns made his return on that night, signaling he was coming for the World Heavyweight Championship and coming to be only the second man to ever keep down Gunther. A 29-1 and record could be rating 29-2 and later tonight. Roman Reigns obviously earning his opportunity against Drew McIntyre at Backlash three weeks ago. The same night Gunther added another victim to his long list retaining the gold. Gunther, the ring general, set to meet the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, for the first time ever. A clash of titans who sits at the head of the table of Friday nights and will wear the big gold belt.
The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Heavyweight Championship. It is main event time here at Battleground. Oh man, what kind of intimidation factor is this? The champion entering first. Gunther setting the precedent, making Roman Reigns wait. Gunther walking down the aisle to claim what he believes is his ring on a night about his show, Friday Night SmackDown, a show that Gunther has been a part of since December of 2022, where he has accumulated a record of 29 victories and only one defeat. Guther has certainly become a big match fighter. And with that world championship around his waist, Guther, one of the most valuable players in world wrestling entertainment. But will he meet his toughest challenge to date? Before our very eyes, the lights are on bright. It's main event time. The clash of titans for the World Heavyweight Championship is here. Gunther certainly brings an intimidation factor. But dare I say, business has just picked up in Sacramento, California. The tribal chief, the self-proclaimed head of the table, Roman Reigns. Guther told WWE.com earlier this week, that he believes that the fact that Roman Reigns calls himself the head of the table in 2024 is absolute blasphemy. Roman returning at WrestleMania, defeating Drew McIntyre at Backlash, and a win over Carmelo Hayes on the Friday Night SmackDown following. Gunther says, that ain't enough. Until you beat me, until you are World Heavyweight Championship, the seat at the head of the table belongs to the ring general. Well, we are about to find out who truly sits at the head of the table on Friday Night SmackDown. Roman came back with a simple goal in mind. Defeat Gunther. Defeat this dominating presence. This final boss-like figure. And win the World Heavyweight Championship in the process. Roman walked away from this industry upwards of two years ago, having beaten them all and done it all. But Gunther is a roadblock, an obstacle that the Tribal Chief has never faced before. The energy in the Golden One Center is palpable. The road to battleground has been tumultuous. And the World Heavyweight Championship one of the most prestigious prizes in this industry today is on the line. It is your main event, live from Sacramento. Introducing the challenger from Pensacola, Florida, weighing in at 265 pounds, Roman Reigns. And his opponent, from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 297 pounds, the World Heavyweight Champion, Gunther! Roman Reigns took the first shot two months ago on WrestleMania Saturday, and we have been waiting for this collision ever since. The World Heavyweight title is on the line. It is your main event here at Battleground. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Sacramento, California on their feet as these two men jock for position in this first time ever main event. Guther, the champion, Roman, the challenger. 
Gunther trying to grapple up Roman Reigns in the early going. Interesting strategy for the ring general. We've seen him throw fisticuffs immediately out of the bell before. Obviously coming in with a different set of a game plan tonight. I get to man who has seen it all, done it all, beaten them all. Roman Reigns the first to knock Gunther down momentarily. We have seen many a times, not just throughout his world championship reign, but over a SmackDown career. Even when you think you got Gunther up against the ropes, he can come back swinging and flip the script in a matter of moments. Remains to be seen if that'll be the story tonight. Will Roman Reigns have a successful comeback to the WWE and win the world heavyweight title? All remains to be seen is Roman with a shot to the jaw. Sacramento, California certainly having some fun with this main event. The Golden One Center has been rocking all night long, but they might blow the roof off as these two titans are colliding before our very eyes. Hangman's neckbreaker into the cover. And I think Roman Reigns knows he wasn't going to win the world championship there, but trying to get in the psyche of Gunther. Even trying to make him extend some energy off that kick out. Let that fatigue set in in the early part of this matchup. But Gunther is so dangerous. Immediately, the drop kick right to the jaw. And Gunther trying to set his own precedent in this matchup. The world heavyweight champion wanting to wrestle his style tonight. This could certainly be a legacy making night for the ring general, who has already been world heavyweight champion for 167 days, 29 wins, only one defeat, since his Friday night SmackDown debut, December the 9th of 2022. Luther has become a big match fighter, similar to what Roman Reigns had become before he walked away from the WWE over two years ago. Roman Reigns believes he still sits at the head of the table. Gunther believes that is his spot to claim. Leg drop by Roman. Whoever has their hand raised high at the end of this will certainly be leaving not only with the bragging rights, but with the most prestigious gold that SmackDown has to offer. Roman Reigns obviously with the power game and certainly a striker as well. Willing to break things down into a brawl. Very well could be Gunther's toughest battle. Roman Reigns showing Gunther why it is not going to be a walk in the park here at Battleground. Off the apron. Taking down Gunther at ringside here in the Golden One Center. Into the barricade we go. As we mentioned a few moments ago, Roman Reigns willing to break things down into a brawl if need be as Guther hoisted on the barricade and gets a boot for his troubles. Roman Reigns knows he can't win this matchup via countout but could certainly do some damage on the outskirts of the ropes. May have given Guther too much time, however. And the World Heavyweight Champion in hot pursuit of the challenger. Now it's Roman Reigns on the receiving end of a barricade shot. We have seen Gunther beat some of the best that the WWE has to offer. From Hall of Famers to future Hall of Famers to future stars of this industry. Up and down the card, they have challenged the ring general. And up and down the card, Gunther has stepped over them. Wait a minute. Power bomb early in this matchup. Gunther looking for the closer. Roman Reigns with the kick out. I can't believe Gunther went to the well that early. Gunther, dare I say, might have just shown a sign of nerves. Trying to get this matchup done in a hurry. We're only a few minutes into this contest. Gunther pulling out one of his best maneuvers. A maneuver that has beaten several superstars to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. The powerbomb earlier in this match. Roman Reigns able to survive. Or is it the opposite side of the coin? Was Guther trying to get this matchup done, or was he strictly using the power bomb as a weapon to weaken Roman Reigns, knowing he would survive? But now Guther is firmly in control of this match, no question about it. I would say it's better not to doubt 
the game plan of Gunther. Because whatever's going on in the mind of the ring general, it has obviously brought him success. The final boss. Many have called him. Dare I say it. And he certainly earned that title. Step up and you may just get stepped on as Roman Reigns is feeling the brunt of it. Roman Reigns shot the first bullet at WrestleMania on Saturday night, back in March. And all roads have led to tonight here at Battleground. Roman Reigns getting the shoulder up that time. Gunther, however, keeping the foot on the gas pedal. Belly to back suplex that time. World Heavyweight Champion has been in some dastardly fights, we would say the least. Drew McIntyre, Brock Lesnar, Edge, Ricochet, Ron Breaker just three weeks ago at Backlash. Just the names Guther has stood across the ring from throughout his world championship reign. But no matter the style of opponent, Guther has adapted and he certainly has evolved. And he has retained his world championship time and time again. Roman Reigns continuing to survive this onslaught. Certainly not thriving is the Tribal Chief. Oof! Super kick by Gunther. Gunther was already in control before the powerbomb, but the powerbomb has certainly aided the ring general in a relentless pursuit to retain his title thus far. Systematically picking apart Roman Reigns. I am sure Gunther Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser sat around the Imperium locker room and did their homework, did their tape study, put together an A plan, B plan, C plan, all the way to Z. Knowing that Roman Reigns was going to be a test of all tests tonight. Referees at a count of seven. Gunther, wait a minute here. He could be going for a count out victory to retain his title. Count of nine, Roman Reigns back in. Gunther looked like he was going for the count out to retain the world championship. But he may have just gave Roman Reigns a second of R&R &R, and now the Tribal Chief may be back in control of this matchup. Oh my goodness, from the top, Samoan drop variation. Just like that, Roman in control. And he almost had the belt. Gunther took the WWE Universe out of this for a few moments, but they just exploded here in the Golden One Center. Maybe not for long. Reversal by the champion. What has Gunther got in mind here? Oh my goodness. Trying to choke the hell out of Roman Reigns. Just goes tumbling down to the floor. And that's a scary sight. Gunther from the top with a splash to the outside. Oh no. And a power bomb to the tribal chief. Gunther beating the hell out of Roman Reigns here at ringside. Realizing Roman Reigns just for a moment there showed some signs of life after a few minutes of a beatdown from the ring general. And now Gunther trying to up the ante. The splash, the powerbomb. Roman Reigns getting back into the ring. Roman knows Gunther's got that championship advantage tonight. Roman's got to scurry up. He's got to get back into this matchup. The window of opportunity is now. Sacramento sounds to be behind the Tribal Chief. Kick right to the sternum. Roman Reigns, power bomb of his own. Dishing it right back. And he almost had the title that time. Oh man, oh man. What a matchup this has been so far in the main event of Saturday night, May the 4th. Roman Reigns dishing a power bomb to Gunther after Gunther has already served him with not one but two. Hoisted on the shoulders is the champion. Gunther counters, wait a minute. Last Symphony out of nowhere.
nowhere. But the foot's underneath the ropes. Gunther's going for the pinfall. Does not realize Roman Reigns is in a very lucky position. A rare misstep from the ring general. That's the same maneuver that won him the World Heavyweight Championship back at Survivor Series in November. The same maneuver that retained him the World Championship three weeks ago at Backlash against Braun Breaker. And it might have brought him success had it not been for Roman Reigns' foot being underneath the ropes. A misstep from Gunther, and Roman Reigns better be thanking his lucky stars. Avoids the drop. And Roman once again finds himself in a position where he's got to just start throwing hands. Samoa drop. Roman Reigns has still got something in the tank. Gunther has been throwing heavy rounds at Roman Reigns, but Roman willing to stop at nothing. Clearing off the announce table. Oh, wait a minute, Gunther just like that. Obviously with more left in the tank. Has hoisted Roman Reigns, wait a minute. Roman cleared off the table, comes back to haunt him. A suplex off the announce table. Roman Reigns can't catch a break. Every time there's a window of opportunity for Roman to climb through, Gunther shuts it in mere moments. Oof. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Gunther gut first into the announce table again. Roman Reigns again having to break the count but the third or fourth time in this matchup. And what a fight this has been between the champion and the challenger. Roman Reigns still with desires of this announce table, but the ring general trying to avoid it. Suplex off the table moments ago. Whatever Roman had in mind didn't work out. And obviously that took something out of Gunther, but maybe not as much as the tribal chief Roman Reigns. Counter. Roman with a shot. Unloading. Going for another power bomb. Power bomb. Oh my goodness, look at the strength into the Samoan drop. You gotta be kidding me. Acknowledge your tribal chief. Roman into the corner, locked and loaded, ready to strike. Superman punch, count it, ref. Gunther kicks out. Roman Reigns. Throwing everything he had behind that Superman punch within inches of winning the World Heavyweight title. But back into the corner, Roman looking to repeat history for WrestleMania Saturday. A spear. 29 and 2. Not just yet. Not just yet. Gunther still in this fight. The power bomb, the Samoan drop, the Superman punch, the spear, but Gunther is still kicking. And it's a reversal that sends Roman Reigns over the top. Gunther is just a different beast. There's a reason this man has held the championship for 167 days. There's a reason this man has had 29 victories and only one defeat in his SmackDown career. Gunther has thrived under these big match situations. Even when you think he's down, Gunther, clearly by showing at his record, may be never out. Roman Reigns trying to find the kryptonite to this inhuman being tonight. Once again, breaking the count. Roman Reigns willing to bring this fight to the outside if it means having a chance. Threw his best shots at the ring general moments ago. It wasn't enough. Back into the announce table that Roman Reigns cleared off a few moments ago. Oof. I don't know what Roman's got in mind, but I don't think Guther wants to be on the receiving end of it. Oh. These two men throwing haymakers on an elevated surface here in the Golden One Center. And Gunther 
The shots may be waking him up. Roman Reigns giving it right back to him. Wait a minute. Roll reversal. It's a suplex by Roman Reigns this time. Just as Roman has dealt a powerbomb for Gunther's powerbombs, he now deals a suplex off the announce table to Gunther, who instituted it earlier. All's fair in love and war. The championship clash of Titans rolls on. Roman is rallying in Sacramento, California. And Gunther is dazed. Roman reigns with a second spear to win the World Heavyweight title. That's it. No! You have got to be kidding. Gunther kicks out of a second spear. The audible gasp that came over Sacramento when Gunther's shoulder came off the canvas speaks volumes. Look at the Roman, desperately, just trying to find a way to keep down Gunther. Roman kicking off a brawl. Gunther, however, the one to finish it. Just like that, Gunther's the one standing on the soles of his boots. Both these men really jockeying for position right now. It may come down to who gets the final blow, and Roman Reigns may have just done it. Open palm strike right to the jawline. Gunther's got to shake off the cobwebs. Roman Reigns has got to keep his foot on the gas pedal. If two spears didn't do it, is there anything that Roman Reigns can throw at Guther to keep him down to win the World Heavyweight Championship? Or is it that same mentality just one more time? Guther hoisted in the air. Great strength at this round of the matchup being shown by the Tribal Chief. Who is going to sit at the head of the table on Friday Night SmackDown? Luther believes he has earned the right. Roman Reigns believes it is still his spot. When we hear a three count and we see a hand raised, we'll have an answer. Oof. Much needed counter by Guther. Bare knee. Damn near right to the temple. And Roman sent to the outside again. This has been a physical fight for the World Heavyweight Championship, as we expected. Golden One Center sold out here in Sacramento, California for the SmackDown exclusive Battleground event on Saturday night, May the 4th, 2024. Guther and Roman Reigns making headlines for the World Heavyweight Championship. Roman Reigns sent back inside the squared circle. Guther with his eyes locked on a possibly weakened Tribal Chief. Guther, not asking, but demanding Roman Reigns is removed from the table itself. A second last symphony on Roman Reigns. Roman kicks out. Roman kicks out. The World Championship is still undecided. Guther can't believe it. Guther still on the ropes. Roman Reigns with anything left trying to get to his feet. Drop kick right to the jaw. Back to the top. An inhumane sight. The beast flying through the air. A splash befitting of the final boss as Guther retains the World Heavyweight Championship. victories and only one defeat 167 days and counting who the hell is gonna stop that man Roman Reigns was not asked he was forcefully removed from his seat at the head of the table Gunther now takes his rightful place no questions asked on the throne of the SmackDown Kingdom. Still, your World Heavyweight Champion, 
closing out an incredible night here in Sacramento, California at Battleground. Behold of Gunther!